What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and today we're back with another 40 Facts video. Now I've been getting a lot of requests by you guys on Facebook specifically, so we're going to be taking a break from fan lore to dive into a Xenos race, and one that a lot of people love to hate. However, I just love to love it. It is the Tau. But we're not just talking about the Tau Empire, we're talking about the hero, the renegade, the one and only Commander Farsight. So today it's about Farsight's Red Sun Assault, uh, meaning that we're going to be talking about his tactics, the kind of mindset that he has to be in to wage war, and uh, you'll be learning a little bit more as to how he basically saved the Tau over on Mugulath Bay. So if you guys want to learn more about Commander Farsight or the Tau in general, we've got two playlists for you guys to check out. The first is a playlist of basically anything about the Tau Empire, and the second one focuses specifically on their battle suits. So go over and check those videos out, but for now, let's dive into the Farsight Enclaves' Red Sun Assault. When Commander Farsight leads his enclaves into war, he does so in a swift and dynamic fashion. For he is the master of the Monka Assault, the art of identifying a target of opportunity and striking at it with maximum force. It essentially means, Monka that is, the killing blow. So think of it as a pinpoint assault that it's kind of like a shock and awe. You basically pour everything you have into destroying the specific target so that the morale and um, the target itself is just utterly crushed. And from there the shockwaves basically bring about the demise of the rest of the army. So with that being said, let's continue on. Generally, during the assault, Commander Farsight will deploy from an overhead Manta missile destroyer, and he uses his jump jets from his battlesuit to descend carefully to his selected target, for it is vital that the sudden shock and ferocity of this attack put the enemy in immediate peril. So he tends to fire his plasma rifle and then crush his enemies beneath the feet of his battlesuit, literally utilizing everything at his disposal to cause the most devastation. From here, Farsight will land in a flurry of swift violence. He will swing his Dawnblade with great arcs, usually decapitating anybody around him. So, like I said, um, it, before any last bit has been chopped off of his enemies, Farsight is already in motion, whirling, spinning, and chopping until all the enemies within reach are dead. Once again, he activates his jump jets and he leaps into the air, plasma rifle spitting bursts of blue bolts that never miss their mark. Commander Farsight usually dives in headfirst, leading his forces you know, right up front in the battle lines. He doesn't like to command from behind, so he's right in the thick of the fighting. However, right behind him is his elite battlesuit warriors, known as the Eight. Now these Eight battlesuit commanders are both Farsight's bodyguard and his war council. Now each one of these warriors is a whirlwind of devastation, each one capable of dealing death in their own unique fashion. However, when it comes to it, they will fight as a cohesive force, decimating the enemy. Basically, when they all fight together, they're unstoppable. So let's learn a little bit more about the way each one of these commanders wages war, beginning with Sub-Commander Torchstar. So Torchstar sends sheets of fire out before she even touches the ground, while Bright Sword's twin fusion guns melt away the metal hulls of battle tanks as if they were nothing but mere candle wax. Commander Bravestorm's plasma rifle punches clean through his enemies, knocking them off of their feet while he closes in on a suitable victim for his formidable Onagur Gauntlet to demolish. Further from the front, you've got Shazvre Ablotai, which sends forth steady barrages from his high yield missile pods, for his AI enables him to simultaneously blast multiple targets, even if they're across the battlefield from one another. Now, such long range tactics are not for O Arakan, whose battlesuit is decked with anti infantry weaponry. 
With each bounding leap, Aragon leaves behind another heap of bodies, the dead falling so thick behind him. Of all the eight, however, Ovesa cuts perhaps the largest swath of the dead, for his towering XV-104 Riptide battlesuit unleashes an enormous amount of supercharged energy from its ion accelerator. Between the volleys of his plasma rifles, Shaso Shavastos relays the enemy's fallback positions, because he knows that, in a Monka assault, should the pace of destruction slow down, the attackers will lose their momentum, and thus the opportunity to utterly destroy the enemy. And yes, the eight are indeed an unstoppable force on the battlefield, but they are just the tip of the spear of the Farsight Red Sun Assault. In their bloody wake come the massed crimson armored crisis teams, as they streak down towards the ground, with their array of vast weaponry adding to the carnage. From here, fire warrior teams, which are often aided by the mobility of devilfish transports, add their sheer volume of pulse weapon fire to the fray. From here on out, a Pathfinder team supported by a recon drone will often play a central role, for they use their marker lights to guide critical shots precisely wherever Commander Farsight needs them. Utilizing these tactics, Commander Farsight has led his enclaves to many victories. When a living tide of greenskins swept over the world of Nafun, the Farsight enclaves did not attempt to fight a long war of attrition. Instead, Farsight planned and performed a perfectly executed Monka style attack. Deploying via high altitude transport, the battlesuits descended straight upon the orc warlord, Nashjaw, and his ironclad bodyguard. The eight cut down the Mega Arbor Oryx with terrifying ease, and the action punctuated when Farsight beheaded the Warlord with a single swipe of his mighty Dawnblade. From here on out, the Tau infantry arrived on a flank, laying down a curtain of pulse fire to ensure that none of the Oryx bosses escaped back to their massed armies. Suddenly, bereft of all their strongest willed leaders, the remaining orc hordes predictably attacked one another, for they were easily routed in a series of successful attacks by the Tau. Now this just goes to show you that no matter the enemy, um, the Montka way of war is a very pivotal and uh, very, I guess, it shows results is what I'm trying to say. For example, the, the orcs, like, they're... They're very brutish, there, there are usually tons of orcs when they go to war, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be stuck in against these orcs, fighting wars for, you know, decades to come. But with the Monka style of attack, Farsight basically says, yo, here are all the warlords, take them out, and then the orcs won't have a structure of command. And the way that the orc society works is, if you're the strongest, you're the next one up. But, if you take out all the war bosses, now you gotta figure out who the strongest is, so there's gonna be infighting, and you're gonna have the orcs fighting amongst themselves, and it just makes easy pickings. So that's what led the Farsight and Enclaves to become so adept at fighting against orcs. But let's continue on. In the many centuries since Commander Farsight has led his expedition to break away from the Tau Empire, this ancient warrior has only further perfected his battlecraft. With the passing of his mentor, the revered Commander Puritide, there are none now living who can match his Firecast Academy tactical scores, or his vast experience of executing this swift killing strike. Although Commander Farsight was exiled from the Tau Empire, and reveled by many of those who consider him a traitor, and even those who see him as a hero, he has still led his enclaves to the scour of the Tau upon Mugaloth Bay. In a flash of crimson, Commander Farsight has launched one of the greatest of all his trademark assaults, all to help his fellow Tau. And with that, we conclude the lore on the Red Sun Assault for Farsight and his Farsight Enclaves. If you guys want more Farsight lore, let me know down in the description, or perhaps you want more lore in the Tau, you know, just in general. Um, also, if you got any other tips, suggestions, or any other awesomeness that you guys want to share with us let us know down in the comments below or email us at one mind syndicate one at gmail.com or even better head on over to our facebook page um if you guys like what we do and want to support us a simple dollar a month goes a long way so hit us up on patreon and uh yeah i think that's it <laughs> um 
Let us know what you thought about the video down below and stay subscribed because we post videos each and every day. This is the Sound Alchemist from One Mind Syndicate and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow.